This lecture is brought to you by Megger, a leading manufacturer of electrical test and measurement equipment. I've trusted Megger's equipment for years and witnessed firsthand their commitment to education and supporting technical schools across the country. For a limited time, Megger is offering my viewers an exclusive discount on their next purchase on products sold through U.S. distributors. Simply visit us.megger.com slash bigbadtech for all the details. Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is series parallel DC circuit analysis. Our objective is to examine electrical properties of series parallel DC circuits and learn to perform a series parallel DC circuit analysis. It is presumed the viewer has ample experience with Ohm's law and the power equations, series DC circuit analysis, including Kirchhoff's voltage law and the voltage divider rule, and parallel DC circuit analysis, including Kirchhoff's current law and the current divider rule. If there is the slightest hesitancy on your part regarding any of these topics, go away and do not come back until you have mastered these subjects. If you feel you are among the worthy, let us begin this lecture with a review of exclusively series and exclusively parallel properties. Current through elements in series is the same. Any and all elements hooked in line or in series with one another form a single path through which all current must necessarily pass. Kirchhoff's voltage law is an especially useful circuit analysis technique for series paths, which states for any closed loop, the sum of voltage rises equals the sum of voltage drops. Or stated more simply, what goes up must come down. Series circuit analysis additionally employs a handy shortcut called the voltage divider rule. Voltage across elements in parallel is the same. Voltage is a two-point measurement. Any and all elements hooked side by side or in parallel with one another to the same two points will experience the same voltage differential. Kirchhoff's current law is an especially useful circuit analysis technique for elements or paths in parallel, which states that the sum of currents entering a node will equal the sum of currents leaving a node. Or stated more simply, what goes in must come out. Parallel AC circuit analysis additionally employs a handy shortcut called the current divider rule. Finally, it needs to be emphasized that Ohm's law and the power equations work all the time. Finally, finally, power in equals power out. As brief as this list may be, I have nothing new to teach you. The rest is just party tricks. It needs to be said that I teach series parallel circuit analysis a little differently than your average textbook principally because your average textbook teaches series parallel circuit analysis so poorly. If you do what your textbook is telling you to do, you will waste time and you'll most likely get a wrong answer. If you do what I'm telling you to do, not only will you save time and get a correct answer, you'll look super cool doing it. The choice is yours. My general advice is twofold. One, oftentimes series parallel circuit analysis is traditionally taught using the reduce and return approach. Do not reduce and return. It is a waste of time and effort to simplify a series parallel circuit into a single total resistance and then bushwhack backwards, hoping you'll arrive at your intended destination without having lost something along the way. My preferred technique is to simplify the circuit of interest into one of two configurations, either a purely series simplification or a purely parallel simplification, and then apply pure series or pure parallel properties to the simplification. Any further reduction in simplicity to a single total resistance is like taking your car apart to look for a quarter you lost under the seat. Just look under the seat. As an example of the senselessness of the reduced and return technique, consider a series parallel circuit consisting of three elements. It looks like R2 and R3 are in a parallel relationship between nodes B and C and they can be taken in parallel with one another, a simplification I'm calling R single prime. Stop here. It's a pure series circuit. Any further reduction by taking R1 in series with R single prime will only waste time and make the return trip that much longer. Two, the utility of Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law cannot be overstated. These simple and powerful techniques allow great conceptual leaps to be made during series parallel circuit analysis. In fact, let's make it a rule that you are simply not authorized to even touch your calculator until you've performed a Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law analysis for the circuit in question. Let's look at how current flows through our first example using Kirchhoff's current law. Source current must travel through R1. Then it splits into two paths, one traveling through R2, the other traveling through R3. It can be said that source current equals I1, which equals I2 plus I3. 
This analysis reinforces our earlier conclusion that R2 is in parallel with R3, a simplification I'm calling R single prime, where R single prime is in series with R1. Let's now look at voltage distribution within this circuit using Kirchhoff's voltage law. For this loop in red, the rise E is equal to the sum of voltage drops, where E equals V1 plus V2. Similarly, for this loop in orange, the rise E is equal to the sum of drops, where E equals V1 plus V3. Finally, for this loop in yellow, the rise V2 is equal to the drop V3. This analysis again confirms that R2 is in parallel with R3, a simplification I'm calling R single prime, where R single prime is in series with R1. Let's now take a close look at our pure series simplification. R1 is purely in series with R single prime. There is absolutely no need to simplify this any further. You will note the simplification still allows access to all the original nodes, A, B, and C. This isn't always the case, however it is for this particular circuit. Let's apply pure series properties to this simplification. Current through elements in series is the same. I source equals I1, which equals I single prime. Kirchhoff's voltage law, the sum of voltage rises is equal to the summation of voltage drops. For the simplification, E equals V1 plus V single prime. It's now a simple matter of performing pure series circuit analysis of the simplified circuit and then mapping these properties back to our original series parallel circuit. Let's do so in a staged manner. As an exercise to the viewer, I invite you to solve for V1, V single prime, I source, I1, and I single prime for the series simplification only. Once you've got these values, we'll map the properties back to our original series parallel circuit. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. First, the parallel combination of R2 and R3 results in simplification R single prime of having a value of 291.7 ohms. There are several ways to obtain the desired figures. Given this is a pure series circuit, perhaps the easiest and most direct means of doing so is through the use of the voltage divider rule. An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates that V1 equals 12.7 volts. An algebraic rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation for the series circuit simplification demonstrates that V single prime will be the remaining 12.3 volts. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates that I1 equals 42.3 milliamperes. Given this is a pure series circuit, we can say source current and I single prime are also 42.3 milliamperes. Now that we've solved for the electrical properties of the series simplification, all we need to do is map these properties back to the original series parallel circuit. We've already solved for the electrical properties of R1 and source current, where source current is 42.3 milliamperes, V1 is 12.7 volts, and I1 is 42.3 milliamperes. Given simplification R single prime between nodes B and C is in fact the parallel combination of R2 and R3, it can be said that V2 and V3 are also 12.3 volts. Why? Because voltage across elements in parallel is the same. We can now use these voltage values to solve for the current through each individual element. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates that I2 equals 24.6 milliamperes. Similarly, an application of Ohm's law demonstrates that I3 equals 17.6 milliamperes. As a means of checking our work, you will note that the summation of I2 and I3 equals 42.3 milliamperes, i.e. the amount of incoming current at node B and the amount of outgoing current at node C. What goes in does indeed come out. Given these values, all we need to do now is solve for power. P1 equals V1 times I1. Substituting our calculated values demonstrates R1 dissipates 535.6 milliwatts of power. P2 equals V2 squared over R2. Substituting our calculated values demonstrates R2 dissipates 303.8 milliwatts of power. Finally, P3 equals I3 squared times R3. Substituting our calculated values demonstrates R3 dissipates 217 milliwatts of power. Total power equals P1 plus P2 plus P3. Substituting in our calculated values yields 1.1 watts. As a means of checking our work, total power is also equal to supply voltage times source current, which similarly yields 1.1 watts. As an additional means of checking our work, if you are foolish enough to waste your time calculating the total resistance seen by the source by taking R1 in series with a parallel combination of R2 and R3, our simplified resistor R single prime, we would have found total resistance to be roughly 591.7 ohms. Similarly, an application of Ohm's law solving for total resistance, where total resistance is equal to supply voltage over source current, also yields a total resistance of 591.7 ohms. I've got a reasonable degree of confidence our answers are correct. Before we move on, 
take a moment to reflect not upon the minute details of calculation, but rather the level of organization we use to solve for the desired properties of the series parallel circuit. Sometimes we use series properties. Sometimes we use parallel properties. But at no point did we lose critical data or backtrack and second-guess ourselves. At all times, we were aware of our goals and those pieces of knowledge leading to those goals. We took an inventory of what we did know and used items in this inventory to quickly arrive and confirm our results. As a result, we got the correct results the first time in the quickest manner possible. This is the standard of success. Circuit analysis at its core is an understanding of the fundamental properties of those circuits under inspection and putting them in use in an organized fashion. For series circuits, these properties are as follows. Current through elements in series is the same. Kirchhoff's voltage law. For any closed loop, the sum of voltage rises equals the sum of voltage drops. Or stated more simply, what goes up must come down. For parallel circuits, these properties are as follows. Voltage across elements in parallel is the same. Kirchhoff's current law, which states the sum of currents entering a node will equal the sum of currents leaving a node. Or stated more simply, what goes in must come out. When you get right down to it, series parallel circuit analysis is simply the determination of what's in series and what's in parallel, then applying the appropriate properties to the appropriate simplifications. This is admittedly not an easy task at first and does take some practice to become adept and efficient. Believe me, you will get plenty of practice. Everything from this point on is series parallel circuit analysis. Beyond a knowledge of these fundamental series and parallel properties and an aptitude for calculation, one must be systematic and organized. My advice is to write the intermediate simplifications results down. That way you can always return to these values at later points to check your work. Use the history in your calculator. Only round the final answer. Use unrounded numbers for all calculation purposes. Keep track of where you are and at the very least, know where you're supposed to be going. Use different permutations of equations to solve for the same property as a means to check in your work. Moving on. While we've got the values for this circuit right in front of us, and before we attempt another illustrated example, let's quickly discuss the influence of opens and shorts in series parallel circuits. Let's use these expected values as a basis of comparison for this discussion. If you recall, an open in a series circuit opens the complete circuit and no current can flow. Whereas a short in a series circuit removes the shorted element from consideration. Conversely, an open in a parallel circuit removes the open element from consideration, whereas a short in a parallel circuit shorts out the entire circuit. With this knowledge, it's easy to come up with general guidance about opens and shorts and more complicated series parallel circuits. This guidance being, it depends. It depends where the open or short occurs. For example, consider an open circuit between R1 and the parallel combination of R2 and R3. This type of open has disrupted current flow through the whole system. No current flows through and no voltage is dropped across any individual element. All voltage will be dropped across this open. In this case, the gaping hole between R1 and the parallel combination of R2 and R3. Opens in series parallel circuits needn't be as dramatic. Consider one lead of R2 dangling out in space. R2 has been effectively removed from this circuit. However, current continues to flow through R1 and R3, now in a series configuration. The opening of R2 has fundamentally changed the nature of the series parallel circuit and all of our previous analyses are invalid. No current flows through R2 and no voltage will be dropped across it. An application of the voltage divider rule demonstrates that V1 will be 7.5 volts. An algebraic rearrangement of the Kirchhoff's voltage law equation for this now series circuit demonstrates that V3 will be the remaining 17.5 volts. An application of Ohm's law demonstrates that I1 will be 25 milliamperes. Given this is now a series circuit, source current and I3 will also equal 25 milliamperes. Again, the opening of R2 has fundamentally changed the nature of the series parallel circuit and all of our previous analysis is invalid. Shorts inside series parallel circuits can also fundamentally change the nature of the series parallel circuit in question. Consider a short across the leads of R3. Not only is this shorted out R3, it's also shorted out R2, i.e. the complete parallel combination of R2 and R3 has been effectively removed from consideration as all current will be routed around it through the low resistance short. 
current continues to flow through R1 and R1 only. The short has fundamentally changed the nature of this series parallel circuit and all of our previous analyses are invalid. R2 and R3 experience no current and no voltage drop. All voltage will be dropped across resistor R1 and as such it will experience 83.3 milliamps of current. Given one element remains in the system, source current will also be 83.3 milliampers. Again, the short has fundamentally changed the nature of the series parallel circuit in question, and all of our previous analyses are invalid. Long story short, it depends upon the nature and the location of the open or short. In every scenario, you will again note that the open or short has fundamentally changed the nature of the circuit, and this change may render all of our previous analyses invalid. All right, let's try another illustrated example of series parallel circuit analysis. All right, let's try another illustrated example of series parallel circuit analysis. Consider another series parallel circuit, also consisting of three elements. As an exercise to the viewer, I invite you to perform a Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this system and see if you can recommend how one might simplify this circuit into either a pure series or a pure parallel configuration. Note, you are not authorized to use a calculator. Put the calculator down, put your hands on your head, and walk away from the calculator slowly. Listen to what I'm asking. I'm asking you to perform a Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law analysis of this system and see if you can recommend how one might simplify the circuit into either a pure series or a pure parallel configuration. Visualize how current flows through this system. Where does current split? Where does current rejoin? Where does current remain the same? Think about how voltage drops are apportioned in this system as one travels closed loops within it. Take note of the nodes, A, B, and C. Voltage is a two-point measurement. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results.